So um, welcome everybody to the Department of Anthropology uh, and our um, open day presentation. So my name is Jacob Klein. Uh, I am the uh, MA tutor in the uh, anthropology department, which means I have a kind of coordinating role uh, for all of our MA uh, programs. I help uh, the other, I, I assist the other uh, MA uh, program conveners um, in their work a little bit uh, from the sides. Uh, and I have with me today two of my colleagues, um, uh, Charlotte Sanders, Dr. Charlotte Sanders, who is uh, the uh, co-convener of the MA Migration and Diaspora Studies Program, uh, and Dr. Catherine Dolan, uh, who is the co-convener of the MA in the Anthropology of Global Futures and Sustainability um, Program. Um, so uh, also I should mention, in addition to being MA tutor, I'm also convener of the Anthropology of Food uh, program. So what I thought we'd do today is I'm gonna give an, a presentation. Um, it'll last about 25 minutes, possibly up to half an hour. Um, and hopefully I'll cover a lot of your questions already in that presentation. And that will leave us with about 30 minutes of Q and A. So you can ask me uh, and my colleagues uh, any questions that you may have. Okay. So let me say a few things about anthropology at SOAS. So um, our department, it is called the Department of Anthropology and Sociology, but it's actually staffed primarily by social and cultural anthropologists. Um, as social and cultural anthropologists, we study the human condition from the perspective of the global diversities of social organization and cultural practice. It is an inherently interdisciplinary subject which straddles the divide between the humanities, such as literature and history, um, and the social sciences like sociology and political science. Uh, anthropology as we do it here can be quite abstract and theoretical, um, but at the same time, our theories are always grounded in real life, everyday experience uh, and, social act and social interaction. And we study these experiences and interactions often through long-term immersive ethnographic uh, fieldwork in which we carefully listen to um, observe and participate in the lives um, of the people with whom uh, we work and study. Um, now, um, anthropology, I should highlight at, at SOAS is not just a theoretical, but very much driven by a concern to better understand the world in order to address social and environmental issues, ranging from gender relations to uh, migration, uh, 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 to food and uh, food safety and food security, from rural poverty, human health and well being, to environmental degradation and climate change. Now, our department is one of the uh, leading anthropology departments, or so we are told. Uh, according to the 2021 QS rankings of anthropology departments, we rank uh, fifth in the UK and 16th in the world. And of course, we're very proud of that. Um, but while we're um, a, a, a leading uh, department, uh, according to these global metrics, um, our department is also a very small department uh, with a friendly, uh, supportive atmosphere and a good rapport between academics uh, and students, and I should add amongst um, academics as well, uh, amongst colleagues, right? Um, now, like SOAS as a whole, the anthropology department's uh, studi student body is very diverse and very international um, and deeply engaged in current issues. And like SOAS more broadly, our academics have regional expertise in Africa, Asia, and the Middle East and their diasporas. We also have a concentration of thematic expertise in areas such as migration studies, food studies, medical anthropology, and especially mental health um, and sustainable development. Now we very much value the uh, importance of research led teaching. So this means that all of our areas, all these areas of expertise, um, some of which I've already mentioned, are reflected in our program and course offerings uh, to students and in our research uh, seminars and students are, master students are invited, very much invited to uh, those research seminars. Uh, the Department of Anthropology currently houses two research centers, uh, the Center for Migration and Diaspora Studies, chaired by Ruba Saleh, who is currently on leave, and the SOAS uh, Food Studies Center, 
of which I am currently chair of. Uh, and these centers run seminars, lectures, workshops, and other kinds of events. Um, and as I've said, they're open not just to researchers, but our events are very much open to students um, in the department and school. Uh, the department offers um, degree programs at three levels. So uh, we have an, an undergraduate degree programs, and if you're interested in those, you should speak to my colleague, Dr. Nomi Late. Those are her details there. We have uh, taught research uh, programs, uh, taught master's programs, um, and we have postgraduate uh, research degrees. And as you know, of course, I'll be speaking mostly about our MA degrees for which I'm overall coordinator. If you're uh, interested specifically in the postgraduate research degrees, uh, please get in touch with uh, my colleague, Dr. Kostas Retsikas. Um, and he's very happy to answer any questions you might have um, about the research program. The MRES, which some of you may be interested, the MRES Social Anthropology degree is something in between a taught master's degree and a research uh, degree. Uh, it's meant primarily for students who have a prior degree in anthropology or sociology, but who need training, uh, more training in, for example, in research methods uh, and or in languages uh, prior to embarking on a, re on a full research uh, degree. Um, and it is uh, categorized in the department as part of our research degrees. So it's also Costas who is um, convening uh, the EMRA Social Anthropology. So do contact him if you're interested. Um, now our MA uh, degree programs do not require, and let me emphasize this, do, we do not require prior training in anthropology or other social sciences. So at the MA level, some of our students have an undergraduate degree already in anthropology or sociology, but many do not. Um, and many take the, the um, MA degree as a kind of conversion course uh, into uh, anthropology. So we currently have uh, four programs in the department. Uh, the MA Social Anthropology offers a broad introduction to the discipline and a wide range of optional modules, ranging from food and migration to mental health and development. Uh, it's currently convened by Dr. Ben Bowles. So if you're interested particularly in the Social Anthropology uh, program, we may be able to answer some of your questions about that, but uh, you can also uh, contact Ben. Um, and we also, within that MA Social Anthropology program, we currently offer a specialized pathway in medical anthropology, um, and who, which is convened by Dr. Orchide Beruzan. And again, if you're interested specifically in the medical anthropology pathway, uh, do get in touch with Orchide. Uh, the MA Migration and Diaspora Studies program, which of course Charlotte can uh, tell you much more about, um, it focuses on the study of human mobilities uh, and on humanitarian and refugee studies. Um, so as mentioned, it's co-convened by Dr. Charlotte Sanders, who's here, and Dr. Ruba Saleh, um, who is currently on leave and is expected to be back in January. Um, so the MA Anthropology of Food um, offers grounding in social anthropology together with specialist training in food systems and food culture. Uh, as mentioned, I'm convener of that program. Um, and apart from any questions you might have today, please, please do get in touch with me um, if you're interested and you want to have a longer conversation. I'm happy to correspond by email or to speak to you via phone or um, Zoom or something like that. Um, and uh, finally, the MA Anthropology of Global Futures and Sustainability uh, is a new program which offers uh, students the opportunity to explore and address uh, some of the major debates of our day on issues such as climate change, sustainable development, and global equality. Uh, it's co-convened by Dr. Catherine Dolan, Dr. Ben Bowles, and Professor Ed Simpson. And I hope, uh, Charlotte and Catherine, that I haven't misrepresented your programs, um, but of course you can uh, add more to that um, uh, in a few minutes um, uh, during the Q&A. Um, I want to say a few things uh, about the structure of the MA programs, just so you have a kind of fundamental understanding um, of how they work. So each MA program consists of a combination of compulsory and optional courses or modules. And I'm going to use the language of modules now because that's what you'll get uh, in the SOAS on the SOAS website and in the SOAS literature. So we call our courses modules. Uh, so theoretical anth approaches to social anth anthropology. Um, 
is a good example of one such uh, compulsory module. It provides grounding in the key schools of thought in the discipline uh, and is compulsory for all students without a first degree in anthropology or sociology, with the exception of students on the MA Migration and Diaspora Studies program, which as you can uh, hear from the name, it does not have anthropology in the title of that program. Um, often students on that program are, are typically encouraged to take uh, theoretical approaches to social anthropology. It is a great course uh, or module, excuse me, um, but, uh, uh, but it is not a, a requirement for Migration and Diaspora Studies students. I should point, uh, point out that currently, if you look at the website, you'll see that theoretical approaches to social anthropology is taught over two terms. So both in term one, which is uh, October uh, to, to, uh, to uh, through December, and in term two, which is January through March. Um, but actually from next year, only the first part of theoretical approaches to social anthropology. So those of you who may be coming in next year will only have to do uh, the half option, as it were. You'll only have to do the first part of that, of, of that uh, module. Um, the second part will be optional. Uh, ethnographic research methods is a training course in ethnographic fieldwork methods, and again, is normally compulsory for all MA students without a, a background in anthropology and sociology. And even for many students who have an anthropology undergraduate, uh, a lot of undergraduate programs don't actually offer methods training. So that would be a requirement for you as well. And if you're concerned, you can ask your program convener and they can advise you on that. Um, this is currently this year, it's scheduled for term one, but actually from next year, it'll be taught in term one. So for those of you, uh, many of you will have as your kind of core uh, anthropology compulsory modules, theoretical, theoretical approaches in term one, and then ethnographic uh, research methods in term two. Uh, another uh, uh, compulsory module for all of you uh, is a, uh, a, the dissertation in anthropology. Um, which is a final research-based dis dissertation of 10,000 words, uh, supervised by a member of the department, but mentored by all of us. Okay. Um, and each program then, each program and uh, pathway will have two distinctive compulsory modules. So for example, for the anthropology of food, you have two modules, one called politics, place, and mobility, um, and one called diet, society, and environment. And you have to take both of those if you're on the Anthropology of Food program. If you're not on the Anthropology of Food program, you may choose one or the other as an optional module, but not both of them, right? Um, so, um, as I, as, so uh, as I've mentioned, our, all of our programs offer a range of optional modules, and these include uh, specialist courses in a region or in a particular area of anthropology, such as climate change. Um, and as I, I suggested, they often also offer one, one or two compulsory courses on the other anthropology programs, um, as in the food example that I've just, uh, that I've just given. Um, and students may also uh, take course modules in other departments. Uh, there are open modules uh, available in other departments. And these include, of course, uh, the many languages uh, that are taught uh, at uh, SOAS. Um, good, so I'm speeding through this, so we'll actually have more time for Q&A. Uh, let me know if I'm speaking too quickly. I, I have a tendency to do that sometimes. Um, so uh, just uh, interrupt me if you can't uh, if you can't follow. Um, okay, so let me say a few things about our modes of study. Uh, normal full-time mode on our programs is one year, and that is one year. It is 12 calendar months uh, from September through to September. Uh, and it is an intensive program. Uh, so you have to be expected to be working, you know, on the program full time, uh, effectively. Um, most of your uh, coursework, um, as I've already suggested, uh, takes place is actually carried out currently between October and April. So in term one uh, and in term two, most of the of the work towards your dissertation um, will be done between April uh, and September, uh, broadly speaking. That's kind of how it pans out for those of you on normal uh, full-time uh, mode. Uh, so students who are normally uh, resident in the UK or Ireland uh, can also take the program on a part-time uh, basis. Um, so full, either part-time over two years or even part-time uh, over uh, three years. Uh, and I should, um, uh, I should point out that 
actually all of our uh, master's programs uh, are available are, are uh, you can you can get uh, student loads uk student loans to take our master's programs that includes the full-time program uh, the part-time uh, program over two years this is for those who are normally eligible to apply for student loans in the uk um, i should point out that if you want to do the program part-time over three years um, that is not compatible with the student loan. You, you would not be able to be eligible for a student loan if you want to do it over three years. Uh, finally, in terms of pathways, we have uh, something called anthropology of mm -hmm, anthropology of food or migration and diaspora studies and intensive language. And this is a full time, uh, 24 month, two year program. Um, and, and that includes a language school. Uh, so in the first year, you do both anthropology, you know, your discipline. Uh, and, and language in the summer, you do a, la a summer language school and the following year and the second year, you also do um, a, a combination of both uh, disciplinary modules and language modules. Um, and this is so this is co-convened between us and anthropology um, and the peoples in the in the respective languages departments. Um, so currently uh, language is available for this pathway or I should say normally uh, language is available for the path for this two year pathway include Arabic, uh, Japanese, Chinese, Korean, Persian, Swahili, Turkish, Thai, Vietnamese, Burmese, uh, and Indonesian. And again, just to reiterate, you can also take uh, one or more language modules as part of your ordinary uh, full-time or part-time anthropology uh, only uh, program as well. Um, these languages and many, many, many other languages that are offered at SOAS. Um, quickly on funding, I've already mentioned uh, something about student finance uh, and postgraduate loans. Um, there are also uh, a limited number of scholarships available. Um, this is a link uh, to that page. It is currently being updated for 2022 intake. So uh, what's up there now, or last I checked a couple of days ago anyway, um, it, it's not actually uh, current, but um, it is, and I expect that the next, over the next few weeks, um, you should have um, information about um, scholarship um, availability uh, possibilities for next year. Um, and finally, a few things about careers. So, um, you know, alumni of our MA programs go on to a variety of careers, and these include research degrees in anthropology, um, and uh, similar disciplines, um, geography, sociology, and so on also, a lot of our students go on to do. Um, they involve careers in media, in government and policy, in humanitarian and development work, uh, in corporate research, uh, and in consultancies and public health. Uh, and now to some extent, career pathways are shaped by particular, by the particular degree that you've chosen. Um, and several of our uh, programs have internship based course modules and other modules that train students in making connections between academia on the one hand, academic study on the one hand, and the worlds of employment outside of academia on the other hand. Um, and these modules are directed practical study in the anthropology of food, um, an internship based module, which is uh, convened currently by my colleague, uh, Dr. Catherine Dolan, who's here today. Um, we have um, the uh, from theory uh, to practice and back workplaces and placements in migration research, and this is within the migration and diaspora studies uh, program and available only to students on, on that program as Charlotte can tell you more about. Um, and we have the module uh, how to change things, which is uh, which is a required module for MA anthropology of global futures and sustainability, but is also open to students on other programs. Um, I'd also encourage you to have a look at our website to explore testimonials from former students, uh, both via the departmental web pages um, and also the via the department, the Anthropology of Food alumni page has a, has a uh, specific page for those of you who are interested in that program. We can read all about uh, some of the things that students have gone on to do um, after completing the program. Um, and finally, here is a um, slide uh, that has been uh, 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 prepared for you, um, not by me, but uh, it has gives us some example gives you some examples of organizations um, uh, and, and and careers that our anthropology graduates have uh, gone on to uh, work in and uh, develop. 
Uh, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, that's me. And um, thanks for your attention. And um, any questions? I'll leave that slide up for a few minutes and then I'll move back to a, a, a slide with our names or something like that. Thank you so much, Jacob. Um, like I said previously, if you've got any questions, but you don't want to raise your hand, you don't want to um, unmute your camera, no problem. You can pop them in the chat box um, and our academics can answer them. Um, or if not, if you want to unmute yourself, um, we can take a question that way. That must have been an incredibly comprehensive uh, presentation. So I'll take that as a um, as, as as a good sign, perhaps, um, or just a terribly boring uh, presentation, maybe even. Um, so maybe it's not a great sign. Um, but of course, as mentioned earlier, I mean, we're all of us, uh, uh, Catherine, Charlotte, and myself, we're all very happy for you to get in touch with us if you have further questions. Uh, and um, also, uh, I should point out the same is true of our colleagues, uh, other you know conveners and other programs, and also. Um, like I said, I'm happy to um, meet with you in person um, as well, or um, via email, um, phone, video link, etc. We've just had a question come in that says, um, would it be possible for Catherine to speak a little bit about the Global Futures and Sustainability module? Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, can you hear me? Okay. All right. Yeah. Hi everyone, um, and this is Kayla. Um, thanks for the question. Um, this is a new program that we're running in anthropology this year. So we're having a kind of inaugural year. Um, and the program really aims to bridge social and environmental perspectives to sustainability. So um, we, uh, there's a, three required courses on this module. The first um, is the Anthropology of Sustainability, which is um, focuses on issues around indigenous economies, alternative economies, um, what is sustainability, climate change. Um, we look at extraction and sort of the environmental collapse and crises that we currently face. Um, and the second required course is the anthropology of climate change, where you dig deep into obviously climate impacts um, and spend the term really um, um, teasing out the various kind of threats to our environment and possible solutions to it. And as Jacob mentioned, the third uh, required course within the program is um, how to change things, where we move from critiquing and examining the issues around sustainability and around social justice and social equality to what are we going to do about it? What are some of the kind of um, practical technologies and initiatives that we can develop to actually move forward and address the challenges that we face um, as a society and a planet? So um, as I mentioned, it's a new program um, this year. Um, we have, uh, we have bi-weekly um, group meetings where we discuss um, either topical issues or in term two, bring in practitioners who are working on issues of sustainability within either the private sector or the public sector um, so that students can get a sense of how they might move forward take these issues um, from you know, a space of critique and academic engagement into the real world um, and uh, you know, begin to uh, participate and engage in solutions to these crises uh, as part of their career growth. Um, and just one final point, um, the program also, of course, um, as Jacob noted, uh, 
includes uh, the, uh, the requirement to take the standard um, MA anthropology courses, core courses in ethnographic research methods and theoretical approaches to social anthropology. So it's an interdisciplinary program, final point, um, but uh, one that provides you with a very strong anthropological foundation. So although we bring in perspectives from geography, from sociology um, uh, and so forth in our critique of climate and social justice, racism, et cetera, we're also very much firmly grounded within anthropology. Um, if you have any other questions, I'm free, you know, happy to ask, answer them here or do feel free to email me at, at, at any time. We've just had one more question come in that says, would it be possible for Charlotte to introduce a bit more about the Migration and Diaspora Studies program? Hello. Oh, I'm just checking. I'm already uh, unmuted, which I am. Um, thank you very much for that question. Um, and yes, absolutely, uh, uh, Alyssa. Sorry, I was just checking uh, in the chat there. Your name. Um, I can explain a little bit more about the program. So um, as Jacob already suggested, the MA Migration and Diaspora Studies program is interdisciplinary. So um, there are many of our students um, currently are taking um, core anthropology models as well. Um, but also at the same time, our core models are very much um, focused on uh, migration and diaspora studies. Um, so we have in the first term, we think uh, we have the module that is African and Asian diasporas in the contemporary world, migration, space, identities. So in this module, we're very much concerned with thinking about mobility regimes, sovereignties, border regimes. And we do that through a decolonial lens, um, thinking, bringing together sort of anthropological research, <clears throat> but also um, critical race theory, uh, gender and migration, and so on. So we're very much um, approaching through ethnographic case studies um, border regimes and the governance of migration. And then in the second term, we switch to thinking about um, diaspora. So we think about, uh, um, uh, we think about diaspora as sort of um, through its political work, through its creative work, as a mode of um, resistance. And we think uh, across a number of different um, contexts, we think about querying uh, diasporas as well <laughs> within that. Sorry, I'm just gonna have some water. <laughs> So we shift our focus then from thinking about the governance of migration to thinking about um, diaspora as a site of resistance as well within the, um, within the second term. And then as Jacob also suggested, we have the really um, exciting work placement module, um, which provides students with the opportunity to take all of the theory work that you're doing within the spaces, uh, the classroom spaces of the course and apply it to um, practical work placements within um, the field of migration. Uh, migration um, research. So this year, some of our options include the Migration Museum London, the UN, uh, the Bail for Immigration Detainees. Um, we have uh, Counterpoints Art as well, and independent filmmakers. Our students have the opportunity to work um, within these uh, placements in order to, um, to gain really invaluable experience within the field, but then also you can feed back into your work uh, on the course more broadly. Um, so that's uh, so that's the migration diaspora um, studies program um, across those sort of three core modules, and then of course uh, the opportunity to write the dissertation um, in relation to migration and diaspora studies as well. Um, again, really happy to uh, to receive any questions about that by email to have um, individual conversations with you all. Oh, I should also mention as well that um, we have the Center for Migration and Diaspora Studies um, seminar series uh, also. Um, in which we have uh, many speakers who are also um, those uh, speakers who are writing some of the essential texts, um, or sorry, have written some of the essential texts um, are across our courses. So again, a great opportunity to hear from them um, throughout uh, term one and term two. Um, so yeah, so that's our MA Migration and Diaspora Studies. A small introduction, thank you. Lovely. Um, there's a couple more questions about migration diaspora studies that have just come off the back of that, um, just in the chat box. The first one says, um, can I ask if the career course from theory to practices and back work placements in migration research open to other department students as it was shown 
um, as offered to migration and diaspora studies? Yes, thank you. Good question. So at the moment, um, and as it will uh, continue to be, the, the From Theory to Practice and Back um, Work Placement Module is, uh, is offered exclusively to MA Migration and Diaspora Studies um, students. So whereas, um, as similarly uh, to, to what Jacob said about the anthropology of food, our core modules, um, African and Asian diasporas in the contemporary world, um, across term one and term two, are open in that you can, you can decide to take one or the other from outside of the program. Um, but in order to take both, and also the theory to practice and back module, you have to be um, on the MA Migration and Diaspora Studies program. Lovely, and there's one more that says also about the Migration and Diaspora Studies program. Um, am I correct in understanding that for the optional modules, I could pick one from another course, such as a module on post-colonialism on the open options list? Uh, yes, absolutely. So the way that the course is structured, you, you have um, the, uh, the option to take um, various optional modules from within uh, the Department of Anthropology. And there are also opportunities to take modules from outside of the department um, also. Um, I'm thinking of uh, our current students who are taking modules across um, uh, and in uh, various departments and including um, post-colonial studies. Um, lovely. Another one says, um, as an MA social anthropology student, can we take courses in migration and diaspora studies? Can we fluidly take courses between different tracks? Um, yes, yeah, so we have our, so we have then our two um, core modules that are open to all um, of the MA uh, students. As I said, you, you can take one of those um, of those two core modules. So we have um, in the first term, the um, migration space identities modules, um, which focuses very much on, uh, on the governance of migration, on, um, on mobility regimes and, and, and borders and power and um, uh, topics uh, like um, necropolitics and the coloniality of, uh, of power in relation to migration and so on. And then, um, and then we have our, um, our core module um, in the second term, uh, the cultures of resistance and the dissolution of boundaries, which thinks more about the, the creative and the political uh, work of, um, of diaspora. Um, and, and that is also open. But the key thing being that you can, that, um, from outside of the program, you can pick one or the other, um, but, but not both, um, as, as both is only open to migration and diaspora studies um, students. I hope that answers the question. Um, someone has asked, um, I'm interested to know if there's any opportunities to focus on even more specialized areas as opposed to broadly Asian, African or Middle Eastern. Um, so for example, Central Asia or the Fagada Valley, for example. So yes, so within, uh, across the two um, modules within um, migration, the Migration and Diaspora Studies Programme, we think every week through a very um, broad um, range of, of ethnographic um, case studies. So we very much take a global approach um, in thinking from sort of particular contexts about um, how we might, how uh, migration and diaspora studies has been approached and how we might um, approach it differently as well. Um, so there is definitely a lot of scope um, to bring in your own um, research interests there. And many, uh, well, all of our students um, have, very sort of um, specific um, uh, interests and, and a focus on a, on a specific um, context. And they bring that into our discussion spaces within the tutorial. So I think um, the, the course um, provides, I think that what the modules, what they provide um, most of all are sort of conceptual frames for approaching your own, um, your own you know, particular um, uh, areas, uh, areas of interest when it comes to your research. And, uh, and I think the tutorials for that reason are, are always a really dynamic space because students bring those um, bring those insights from their own contexts um, into into those tutorial discussions. And then, of course, you have your your opportunity to write um, the dissertation, um, which will allow you to explore those in more detail as well. And I should just add that what Charlotte has just said of migration and diaspora studies holds equally true of all the programs. Um, so I don't need to add to what she said. It's, it's um, um, I mean, I, I guess the one thing that I could add is that of course, um, you'll find that a lot of people in this uh, department 
uh, are specialists in uh, you know particular regions within these regions as well that may or may not uh, you know correspond one to one with your particular regional interests, um, but in some cases uh, they do. Lovely. Um, this is for any of our academics. As a graduate of anthropology and sociology, what other career avenues would be available to someone with this MA degree? Uh, does anybody want to take that or shall I uh, have a first stab at that? You have a first stab at that, Jacob, because mm -hmm. okay. you were doing anthropology before. <laughs> Um, so what I would say is that, I mean, I've already, uh, in addition to what I've already listed in the, in the uh, slides uh, previously um, and have mentioned there, I mean, those are representative examples. And I've also said that you should uh, have a look at uh, the testimonials from our students uh, on the SOAS website, um, which will probably give you a better sense than, uh, you know, me simply uh, rambling at length about all the different kinds of jobs that people have gone to do, whether it's in museums or business or in the food industries or whatever. Um, what I would say, however, is that, um, which I, I kind of glossed over a little bit, but uh, you know, mentioned in passing, is that actually to some degree, um, those kinds of career opportunities are very quite specific to the particular program that you're taking as well. Um, and are something which is something which is cultivated through the uh, relationships and contacts that you build up with uh, fellow students um, and with uh, staff attached to those programs to some extent. Um, so, for example, in the uh, Anthropology of Food program, uh, you'll find that in addition to the uh, kind of internship based module that we have. Actually, a lot of the things that we do uh, revolve around the Food Study Center, invited speakers, and so on. Um, and in those events, that's often where a lot of um, contacts are made, where people are invited uh, to, um, uh, you know, uh, or, you know, uh, where, uh, you know, other interesting contacts are made. Last night, we had a wine taste, a tasting event with presentations. Um, and that actually has already led to uh, the person who ran the establishment that hosted our event asking if we have any people who would be interested in taking up internships with them or, and or short-term positions um, in their organization. So it's really that kind of thing that happens uh, very much. And I think that's true probably for our other programs as well, that it's very much within that kind of, um, you know, the, the, the context that are developed amongst fellow students and with staff and other kinds of organizations when you hear at, at the, you know, in the program itself. A lot of our food students have gone up and set up their own uh, startups after the program, for example, they've met here and they've gone and, and done that. So again, I think you should really speak to the, the especially try to, you know, try to find a time to speak to the convener of the program that you're interested in and maybe pick their brains a little about a, a little bit about that. And you can get more, uh, more detail. I said I wouldn't start rambling, but I kind of have done that. Um, but just to kind of, that's a, a, an exemplary form of, of rambling, right? I mean, that's an example of, of the kind of ramblings you might get from uh, other conveners as well, um, who might be able to give you more information with, you know, with respect to that particular program. Um, yeah, I, and just to add that, um, it's also definitely the case that the, um, the work placement module within the MA Migration Diaspora Studies Program has has led to um, a number of long-term um, jobs for, um, and, and careers for, for our students. Amazing. Um, so another question has come in, sort of split into three questions. Um, is it possible to change from an MA program to the MRES? Um, how many programs can you apply for sort of each academic year? And if there are any sort of special requirements for the application of an intensive language program if you combine it with um, an anthropology and sociology program. Uh, sh shall I answer that? I, I suppose I could. Um, okay, so um, it is sometimes possible to change your MA program when you get here. I would say during the course of the year, um, not really, um, actually, but 
um, if if when you if you've been given an offer, uh, if you've made an offer to one of our programs and you decide when you get here that actually you'd much rather do another program instead within the department, that is sometimes possible to do. You can speak to the conveners um, about that and you can apply to do that, but it's not normally done and it's not something I would recommend. But sometimes there is a degree of flexibility about that. But it's something I would. You know, if you want to do it, do it early on, uh, first couple of weeks, really, um, after you get here. Um, how many programs can you apply for? When you put in an application for at, at SOAS, you can't have several applications in at one and the same time. What you can do is you have a first and second choice on your on your application. So um, if uh, it, it, you know if if there's a program that you really really want to do. Um, but you think you may not be um, entirely qualified for that it might be difficult for you to get into, then you know put that as your first choice and then put you have a, a backup as a second choice. But you can't put in several applications at one at one time at any one moment. Um, what are the special requirements for the application of intensive language? Most of the languages uh, are available from the beginner's level, even on the intensive language uh, pathways. Um, but um, occasionally that has not been the case with all languages. So what I would do is if you know specifically which language you're interested in, contact the convener of the, on the languages side. Um, you can find it very easily on the SOAS website um, and ask them specifically um, whether it's going to be offered from the beginner's level um, a, you know, in that, in that, in that um, in that following year. What happens with languages in general, because um, a lot of our students come in to, to study language, either if it's just as an optional module or if for an intensive language uh, uh, pathway, uh, a lot of our students come in with prior knowledge of the language and you will be assessed in the first week. Um, so typically already during uh, registration and welcome week, you'll be assessed in the languages department um, and they'll put you in a, a class that is suitable to your level. Um, we've had another question come in from Elisa, who asks, are there student associations to take part in the organization of conferences or suggesting guests within the Center of Migration and Diaspora Studies? Sorry, I just had to unmute myself there. Um, so, yes, I mean, with, within the, pro, the, the sort of uh, MA, MA Migration Diaspora Studies program, um, uh, is is a kind of uh, is a, a fairly small community in the sense that um, uh, we uh, we all you know spend a lot of time together and there's definitely a, a lot of scope for students to have um, to have a say. As I suggested as well, we also organise um, the seminar series around um, the essential texts of the course. So there's that as well. Um, but the series um, is organised uh, a term in advance, and there's always scope to uh, to suggest um, guests as well. I'd say that many of um, our students take a really uh, active role um, in, in such things. Um, and with regards for, to sort of events outside of that, I mean, uh, Monday, for example, we're hosting a film screening um, in addition to the seminar series. So yeah, also the, the Center for Migration Diaspora Studies can, um, can be a, a really useful um, forum or, or platform for organizing additional events as well. So yeah and using the resources at SOAS, of course, as well. Perfect. And what Charlotte just said about the Migration Diaspora Studies program holds true of the Anthropology of Food program as well. So there's a kind of very close relationship between the Anthropology of Food program and the Food Studies Center and the weekly seminar that we run. Um, and at least two of the speakers that we have in the Food Forum, which is the Food Studies Center's research seminar, um, are speakers that have been uh, invited because our MA students uh, asked me to invite them. Brilliant. Um, the next question is for Catherine. Um, does the anthropology of global futures and sustainability have an approach of political ecology to it? Um, what is the difference between that master's and the MSc environment, politics and development program? And the sort of second question would be, what advice would you um, give when they are applying to the program? Oh, okay. Thank you for the, that question. Um, 
Well, in terms of a political ecology approach, um, it does feature in some of the topics that we engage in. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, the program is interdisciplinary, but it is also um, comprised a very diverse range of uh, sort of um, academic approaches to the topics of climate change and sustainability. And at the center of those approaches, I really um, would say that we're concerned largely with issues of power. So how economic and political structures today um, construct nature and our planet um, in a particular way, i.e. Um, ascribe value to, um, to natural resources in a way that justifies uh, their, their destruction. So that means that, you know, for example, we might use a political ecology approach when we're looking at indigenous economies and the appropriation and destruction of land in the Amazon, but we might use an economic anthropology approach when looking at alternative economies such as degrowth or circular economies or different sort of food sustainability initiatives. So um, I think the point here is that we draw on a range of different um, approaches, conceptual lenses to look at the topics that we're covering. But you raised the question about the, the program and development studies on the MSC environment, politics and development. Um, we frequently um, have been asked the question about what's the difference between what anthropology does and what development studies does when we're, the focus is on um, development concerns. And um, it's largely one of, um, but I'd say actually there's two central points to this distinction. One is that anthropology, um, specifically this course, as well as all of the MAs that we offer, is fundamentally rooted in ethnographic material, ethnography. So um, we're really concerned with understanding how people in various parts of the world um, from urban centers to rural areas are really understanding, conceptualizing, engaging with the issues of concern, whether that be urban displacement or water shortages or um, racism um, in the United States. And in development studies, um, May, may draw on a similar approach, for example, in political ecology, but the level of analysis is quite different. They're not approaching the topic from the bottom up, if you will, but rather more the top down. Um, there's also a greater uh, focus on sort of policy analysis and policy prescriptions in development studies, whereas we're very much concerned with um, how ideas get produced, how the way that we think about nature um, is derived from certain beliefs we have about nature, um, how we think about uh, people and neighborhoods and community is actually something that we produce um, and that value is, 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 means different things um, to different people. And so in thinking about the difference between development studies and anthropology, I think it's important to, to just think about the, the, the lens that's applied to understanding social problems and our critical engagement with them, with anthropology really being concerned with um, drawing on ethnographic material, material that anthropologists have derived from long-term engagement in a place in order to understand how we approach problems. Um, and then your final question is, what would you advise us to have in mind when we apply to the program? Um, is that, um, I'm not sure I understand. Um, is that what you should include in an application to make, your, to make it stronger or how would you choose a program? Perhaps you could just clarify that for me. I'd be happy to answer it. I believe it's in reference to um, their personal statement when they're applying. 
Oh, okay. Um, um, yes, I think um, in terms of the application itself, I mean, it's always wonderful if uh, you've worked or you've taken, you know, classes that are related to the topic at hand. But even if not, um, you know, one of the the things that we look for is just uh, your interest in uh, the topics that we cover in the program, how you see yourself um, in relation to those topics, um, and what you would see as um, a, a potential future career uh, opportunities as a result of in, um, participating in the program. So um, we're very broad minded with the Global Futures MA because it is an interdisciplinary and broad based MA. Um, and don't look for you know particular degrees or particular experiences, but more um, uh, more interested in how people uh, understand the issues of sustainability and climate change at this point in time, and how you wish to engage with those issues um, through uh, participating in the program. Amazing, thank you. We are going to have to wrap up this session in just a couple of minutes, so I will take. The last question that's in the chat box. Um, if you do have any sort of more specific question, feel free, um, like our academics have said, to email them um, if you want to talk to them further. If you have any um, admissions questions um, about your application in general, um, you can email um, study at soas.ac.uk. Um, I've just put that in the chat box um, and they will get back to you. The final question I'm going to ask is um where's it gone what are some potential work placement modules are the areas of focus i.e law health mental health food education up to us to choose you want to take that again catherine was in relation to the um uh, the food one oh sure sure um uh uh, in the anthro, sorry, in the MA Anthropology of Food, as jo Jacob mentioned, we have a directed practical study in food where students um, uh, engage in a work placement opportunity. And so, for the past couple of years, um, we've really been broadening out um, the number of um, places that students have been able to work. Um, for their placement. Um, and this ranges from like Edible Landscape London um, to various uh, food banks, food provisions uh, centers, to Pulsar, uh, an organization that works to gain um, knowledge of di diaspora, um, culinary histories, migration histories. We have uh, a student that's uh, working this particular term um, with a food organization in Cornwall um, that is distributing food locally. Um, we have a range of different, um, we've had a range of different internship opportunities in policy um, with various government departments, with Magic Breakfast that provides um, uh, meals to children in schools. Um, so I would say that the work placement opportunities straddle various areas um, in the public sector, the private sector, um, and the NGO sector, and cover things, everything from sustainability um, to uh, working is in, in, as a PR person in a restaurant constructing um, uh, advertisements for food, um, to working um, on farms or in ethical sourcing. So it's just incredibly diverse. And I would have to say that it's one of the, the most um, valuable and uh, I think personally exciting opportunities we have in our department because uh, the students have an opportunity to bridge policy um, or bridge uh, real life experience with their anthropological theory and the anthropology of food, which they love. And also many of these opportunities have led to employment, um, further employment um, for the students that are doing the work placements um, because they just have enjoyed the opportunity so much that they've stayed on. If you would like to hear more about that, please do email me and I can provide you a, an actual um, list of the specific positions people have held at various places, um, which would give you probably a, a more um, comprehensive sense of, of what's it, what has been 
um, entailed. Amazing. For Charlotte to add a couple of things from the work placement and migration studies. Yes, absolutely. So um, again, I'm happy to receive any emails um, if you would like a, a, a list of all of the, um, the different opportunities that um, are, are currently available for this year. But um, again, we have a really uh, wide range of um, work placement opportunities, such as um, working with independent filmmakers within the arts, counterpoints arts, um, uh, various exhibition spaces, uh, also the Migration Museum. Um, the uh, working with the UN Special Rapporteur, we have working um, uh, against um, in action groups, for example, um, uh, challenging no recourse to public funds, um, uh, the bail for immigration detainees, um, working, uh, doing casework across various migrant support centres in London. So um, there, there are loads, a, a very um, wide range um, of opportunities uh, to be involved in. Um, for both um, building um, sort of expertise that you've already been building or for trying out something um, completely different as well and gaining new skills um, through, through the module. So again, I completely agree with Catherine that I'd say it's um, just so valuable and, and also um, such an exciting opportunity. Amazing. I just want to say um, thank you so much to Jacob, Charlotte and Catherine for today's session. Um, like I've said previously, if you do want to contact them, their details are on this slide here. Um, and if you have any um, admissions questions or general questions um, before applying to SOAS, then feel free to email study at soas.ac.uk and someone will get back to you um, as soon as possible. Um, thank you all for joining and I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amani. Thank you. Thank you.